once you get your length that you need, as you can see, I did my diagonal stripe pattern until I got here to the very end. And at the very end, I finished off just as I had started. I did my five rows of my uh, background color so that way it would match the other side that I did. Now, once you get that done, you are ready to put your ends onto your bracelet. Now you will find a hundred different ways to put ends on the bracelet. I'm going to show you my favorite way to do it, but this is not necessarily the correct, you know, or right way by what some people might say, but this is the way I like to do it. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle and I start on the, it's the beginning where I started. And the reason I do that is because if I get this done, this side done, and the other side I think is going to be too long, I can take some out on the other side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to get under my little thread there that was for my stop bead and I'm going to pull that thread out so that way I don't have any kind of thread on the outside. And I will thread my needle onto this end. Once I have the needle on my thread, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up 15 beads. Now the good thing about using the toggle that I have chosen is that with this toggle, as you can see, it will go over the regular size 11 delicas and you won't have a problem. Some things though will not, so you may have to rework this little pattern. But what I've done is I've got nine beads here and then the rest of them up here. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come back through bead number nine coming towards the base. You want to make sure you get it good and tight there. Then I'm going to pick up eight more beads. And once I have those eight beads, I'm going to come to the opposite side over here. And I'm going to come back through just that top, very top bead there in the corner. So that when I pull, I now have my closure. Now, it's completely up to you um, whether you do this or not. I personally do not like to see those little spaces here on the end. So what I've done is I've completed the second end already so you can kind of see what I've done. What I've used is I've used a little tiny size 15 silver line gray seed bead that will fill in those little holes. Now, it's not required that you do that at all, but it's just something that I like to do to make it look a little better. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll pick up a 15 and I will come through the next 11 sticking up on the base. And I will just come straight across picking up the 15 and going through the next 11 on the base until I get all the way to the other side. And once I get here to the end, I'm going to take my needle and just go through those last two beads because I can't add any more of the 15s. So that just kind of fills in the bigger holes and you can use like a little accent color or you can use something that's going to completely blend in similar to what I've done here. Then I'm going to take my needle and I'm just going to come back through all the beads here that I had added for my closure. Now what this is doing, this is called reinforcement. <clears throat> and this is just going to make, reinforce and make my toggle area a little bit stronger so that way as much pressure won't be put on it. As you can see, I'm just following the thread path just like I would have when I first started to add my toggle. <clears throat> now, once I get that done, 
I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come straight across through the beads that I have already on my base and the beads that I had added just to reinforce those little 15s one more time. And once I have come all the way across, I'm going to tie off my thread. And the easiest way to do this is to take your needle and come up under between two beads that are side by side. Leave yourself a little bit of a loop here. Take your needle, go back through the loop. And once you pull, make sure when you pull that that little knot you have goes in between the two beads that you were went under. And what I like to do is I like to put about three knots in each little spot. <clears throat> and then what you can do is you can either take and stitch through a few of your edge beads here and do the same thing. Go under the thread between my two beads there on the end and make myself a few little knots. Or, if you want to, you can stitch all the way to the other side and do a few knots. It's completely up to you and what you prefer to do. But once I get my knots put in there, I do stitch through a few beads before I cut off my thread. And the reason I do this is so that if one of my knots comes undone, it won't fall right apart. You'll have a little bit of extra thread that you can work with if need be. So once I've got my thread stitched through, then I'll take my thread burner or I'll take a pair of scissors and I will trim that little thread as close as I can get it there. Then you'll want to finish off the second side so that you'll have your piece finished. <clears throat> now as you can see, this adds quite a bit of extra to the bracelet. So you'll want to take into account the length here that you're adding to the bracelet when you're actually doing the base part. So once you do it, as you can see, you're going to have a beautiful diagonal striped peyote stitch bracelet. Now what you learned to do today was even count flat peyote stitch. Stay tuned because I'm going to give you some quick tips on doing peyote stitch.